John 3.23 Erat autem et Johannes baptizans in Ainon juxta salim, quia aquae multae erant illic, et adveniebant et baptizabantur. And also John was baptizing in Ainon near Salem. These are the names of places. Since there was a lot of water there and they were arriving and they were being baptized. We'll talk more about the translation here in a moment. Well, here's frequently the question we have to ask ourselves. Autem, when we see it near the beginning of a sentence in the Vulgate, truly adversative or just connective? What do you think? We've got a 50-50 chance of being correct, right? My vote is for connective or conjunctive purpose here. And also, there doesn't really seem to be any strong reason to read this sentence in opposition to the last one. It's not as though John's baptizing in this same area was a huge problem that's going to cause major conflict. Um, it's simply additional information that's going to set up what comes next. So John also was there. We could even have said Aderat, that is, was present, baptizing. Now, could we just have said John was baptizing there, something like Ilik Baptizabat? Yeah, we certainly could, but this is something that the Vulgate frequently does, and again, it's often an imitation of the Greek usage. We have a finite form of esse complementing a present participle. Someone was there doing something, so this is a characteristic construction of the Vulgate. In Ainon, near Salem. These are, of course, place names taken straight over more or less from Hebrew via Greek, and so they don't really need to detain us too long. Since, so this answers the unspoken question, why was John also there baptizing? Why, why were all of these people, why is all this baptizing happening in this area, in other words? Well, here's the reason. Because there was an abundance of water there. Now, I must admit, this phrase, aquae multi, uh, as the Vulgate is using it here, strikes me as a little bit comical, um, coming as I am more frequently from the reading of classical texts. In classical Latin, aquae multi would mean lots of different discrete water sources or bodies of water, most of the time. Again, I, I can't say for certain there aren't exceptions to this. And, and uh, when I say these things to you about usage, of course, I'm speaking from my own experience and, and I may err uh, naturally. But in my experience, aquae multi usually would mean lots of different sources of water all collected in one place, as at an oasis, for instance, or a place where there were lots of fountains or, or many small lakes or something like that. Normally in classical Latin, if you meant to say a lot of water, you could say abundantia, aquae, or probably even more idiomatically, you might say copia aquae, usually with this genitive. When you're talking about uh, an amount of something in Latin, especially of some substance, usually you use some word like copia plus the genitive case. Copia aquae, there was, there was a lot of water there, and of course then you would use uh, a singular, uh, third person singular verb. Here though we've got, there, there were lots of waters there. Again, that just means there was a lot of water there which is necessary if you're going to be dunking people in the water as was going on uh, in these baptisms. So there was a lot of water there in that place. Remember, this is opposed to heek, which is here in this place, there in that place. And they were arriving, third person plural, imperfect, active, indicative. And then same here, except passive instead of active. They were arriving and they were being baptized. Who's, who's the subject of these verbs, by the way? Well, we've actually kind of got to supply it. Uh, the text doesn't make this completely obvious, but we've got to supply something like homines uh, or populus, in which case if we had populus, of course, the people, we'd have to change the verbs to singular verbs. But the idea is here, folks are coming and being baptized, or multi, many people were coming, were arriving, and were being baptized in this place.